my fellow wizards, spell elements have been around for a few years now in Wiz, but I still see a lot of confusion about how and where to get them. The tricky thing is, there's a bunch of different ways to acquire spell elements, but it can differ widely depending on your level and how far you've progressed through certain worlds, which makes this whole thing a freaking puzzle where you're trying to figure out which world you should farm in based on whether or not you finish the next world in a sequence, but wait, it's actually linked to your badge status, and oh wait, you're past a certain point, so now you can't farm for any of the lower ranked spell elements, and you get my drift. So, while I won't be covering all the different ways to get spell elements in this video, I want to highlight an option that will work for you at any level and explain exactly what you'll need to do to get it to work. I would like to point out though that I mostly recommend this particular method to wizards who have already completed Celestia and are locked out of earlier spell element farming options since you'll get far more spell elements if you're at a lower level and able to farm bosses directly in Wizard City through Dragonspire. All that clear? Okay. Today we're going to be talking about the Elemental and Spiritual Retriever pet talents, what they are, how to get them, and all the different spell elements you can get using this strategy. Alright, so what are the Elemental and Spiritual Retriever pet talents? They are epic ranked pet talents which provide a chance that the pet may find various school spell elements at the cost of 40 happiness per use and with a cooldown of 300 seconds or 5 minutes. The Elemental Retriever talent can help you get Fire, Ice, Storm, and Balance spell elements, while the Spiritual Retriever talent will net you Death, Life, Myth, and Balance spell elements. Both these talents count as an adventure pet power which you can only have one of on each pet so you'll need at minimum two pets, one with each Retriever talent if you want to access both talents. You can get these talents by hatching for them via the hatchmaking kiosk in the pet pavilion of Wizard City or by having a first generation pet with the talents already in their pool. There are several pets that come with the talent already as rewards from events like Beast Moon Hunt or from pets and newer packs and bundles. However, the easiest way to get either of these talents is just to hatch any of your pets with a pet from the kiosk with the retriever talent you want until it manifests on the offspring. You can get the talents on anything from a piggle to a crown's pet, so it's just personal preference at that point. So, keep hatching your pet with another pet with either Elemental or Spiritual Retriever manifested and train the offspring at least to adult each time until you get the talent manifested on your own pet. Great, you're done now, right? Well, not quite. Unfortunately, both Retriever talents will be locked and unable to be used until you get the required reagents to unlock them. Elemental Retriever requires 60 tokens, 30 Elemental tokens, 10 Fire tokens, and 5 Elemental Retriever reagents. Spiritual Retriever, on the other hand, requires 60 tokens, 30 Spiritual tokens, 10 Myth tokens, and 5 Spiritual Retriever reagents. I know, it couldn't just be easy, could it? Thankfully, most of these tokens you'll be getting anyway whenever you train pets up, so you may have some of the reagents you'll need already on hand. You can get tokens when you train any pet to Ancient, Epic, Mega, or Ultra, with more rewards given for higher pet stages like Ultra. Talent tokens are given regardless of the school of the pet. Elemental tokens are generally more likely dropped by raising Ice, Fire, or Storm pets, while Spiritual are more likely to drop from raising Life, Death, and Myth pets. Finally, the school-specific Fire and Myth tokens come from raising those specific school pets to Mega or Ultra. So your best strategy here if you're in need of more tokens is to raise Fire pets to Ultra if you want Elemental Retriever and Myth pets to Ultra if you want Spiritual Retriever. You can pick any Myth or Fire pet you want and just keep raising those pets to the highest stage and you'll eventually get the tokens you need. I definitely recommend timing this process around membership benefits like Double Pet XP to speed up this whole thing and use as few pet snacks as possible, but if you're low on Mega Snacks and need some help getting more, I do have another video covering the best ways to get Mega Snacks if you're interested. Okay, so now assuming you have the tokens you need, what's the deal with the Elemental and Spiritual Retriever reagents? These, unfortunately, cannot be gotten through pet hatching, but are instead dropped from certain bosses you'll need to farm. And the bummer is, all the bosses that drop them are locked behind specific paid gauntlets, which really sucks for player accessibility. Why are you the way that you are? Elemental Retriever, for example, currently drops from bosses in four gauntlets. You can get them from Krokotep and the Time Butterfly in the Doomsday Croc gauntlet, and Bison in the Great Sky Train Robbery Gauntlet, the secret boss Groundskeeper Willy in the Unforgiven Dead Gauntlet, and finally Dr. New in the newest Nightmire Gauntlet. Thankfully, Spiritual Retriever also drops from the exact same bosses except for Unbison from the Great Sky Train Robbery Gauntlet, who exclusively drops Elemental Retriever for some unknown reason. I do wish that King Zhao would reconsider locking these reagents behind a paywall because they are one of the few options available to farm spell elements at higher levels. Thankfully, there are ways to access gauntlets for free without needing to buy them, with the easiest option simply being to friend anyone who already owns the gauntlet and then visiting their house to use it. 
People tend to be pretty generous loaning out their gauntlets, so I recommend just asking around social media, Discord communities, or the official Wizard101 subreddit for help if you need it. Out of all the available gauntlets, I recommend the Doomsday Croc Gauntlet as your best option for farming both Retriever Reagents, as this gauntlet is the only one of the group that has two different bosses that can drop both Retriever Reagents per run, so it speeds up the farming process a lot. While these are rare drops, it didn't take me more than a few hours to get five of each reagent, and the gauntlet also has some other neat gear drops and even permanent mount drops as a bonus. For even faster farming, I recommend bringing a lower level friend or throwaway account between levels 1 through 25 so you can enter at the lowest gauntlet tier difficulty and just one-shot everything since the reagents drop from every tier. Rinse and repeat until you get the drops you need. Okay, once you have all your tokens and elemental or spiritual retriever reagents, you can simply click on the lock icon next to the elemental or spiritual retriever talent on your pet from your backpack and officially unlock the talent permanently. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! A tip I'd like to mention if you're trying to breed multiple retriever pets for more than one wizard is that you don't need to unlock the talent again on any future pets as long as they are the direct offspring of the original pet with the unlocked talent. So for example, if I unlock the spiritual retriever talent on a pet and then breed it with another pet, any offspring with the talent manifested will automatically have it unlocked already. However, if I get a pet from, say, a pack or gauntlet drop, train it up, and it manifests one of the retriever talents, it would still be locked and I would need to get the reagents to unlock it again, or instead, breed it with the original pet with the unlocked talent instead, where then their offspring would also have it unlocked. Just remember, there needs to be a direct line of descent if you want the unlocked talent to be inherited. Thankfully, it's not too hard to simply breed any pets you want from the original unlocked talent pet and then trade them over to your other wizards where the talent will thankfully still remain unlocked. I was able to breed a full set of retriever pets from my original pet, all with the talent automatically unlocked and hand them over to every wizard I have with no further work needed. Okay, now all the hard work is done, you have several options for how you can use your pet to farm spell elements. However, no matter what you pick, the method will be the same with you first needing to locate wooden chests. I recommend going to less crowded realms where there are likely to be more chests available and then make sure you equip the pet with spiritual or elemental retriever unlocked. Next you need to click on the pet icon on the lower left side of your screen and select the offer snack for happiness button to feed your pet snacks to raise their happiness. In order to use the retriever talents you'll need at minimum 40 happiness each time so I recommend filling up your pet's happiness all the way if you're planning on farming chests. With their happiness filled up, you should see a new icon appear on the lower left when you get near a wooden chest you can open labeled Elemental or Spiritual Retriever. Simply click on this button and your pet will run to the chest and open it for you, giving usually between 6 to 8 spell elements per chest depending on the world you're in. Make sure you do not open the chest yourself with the open chest prompt or you won't get the spell elements. You need to open it with your pet talent to get the correct drops. You'll notice after opening any chest that there is a 5 minute cooldown on your pet talent, which is kind of annoying, so I recommend putting on something like Netflix or YouTube in the background if you're trying to pass the time. One kind of aggravating part of this farming method is having to wait out the clock each time. It's been 84 years. So, which world should you open these chests in? If you want the rank 1 through 6 spell elements from various schools, you'll want to open wooden chests in Wizard City, Crocotopia, Marleybone, Mushu, and Dragonspire. Wizard City, Krakatopia, and Marleybone will net you a mix of random spell elements from that world along with several treasure cards, while opening chests in Mushu and Dragonspire will net you 8 random spell elements from that world. As I mentioned earlier, this strategy will generally net you spell elements at a much slower rate compared to being able to farm bosses in these worlds directly for spell elements, where you can get 10 plus spell elements per fight, but if you are a higher level that has completed Celestia, then you are locked out from farming lower world bosses for spell elements anymore, so using spiritual and elemental retriever pet talents are one of your few options left to acquire rank 1 through 6 spell elements, so you'll want to pick the method that works best for you based on your personal limitations. However, the retriever talents really come in clutch for higher level wizards in the worlds of Caramel, Lemuria, and Novus, where you can actually get spell elements for spells from those worlds. Usually when questing through these worlds you'll gain a certain number of spell elements from main and side quests, but they aren't enough to fully upgrade your school spell to the highest tier, and in my experience the bosses are super stingy about dropping the spell elements you need. However, if you use the retriever talents instead, you will consistently get spell elements for the Caramel, Lemuria, and Novus themed spells, allowing you to finally max out their spell element tiers if you're having trouble getting the drops from bosses. Overall, I think the Retriever talents are pretty useful, allowing players at any level or world progression to consistently farm spell elements, though I think this method should be buffed a bit in future updates so that the timer isn't so long between uses and you also get more spell elements each time. 
Due to the five minute cooldown, this method may best be used in conjunction with other methods like farming bosses for best efficiency. Like if you're farming caramel spellaments, you can open a chest and then fight the boss Heidi, for instance, who drops spellaments during the five minute cooldown. So by the time you're done with her fight, you can then open another chest, but that's just a suggestion. As always, the best method is whatever works for you personally. And as one more note, I did experiment to see if you could swap between two different pets, one with Elemental Retriever and one with Spiritual Retriever, to essentially cut down the timer by half on opening chests, but unfortunately, both talents share the same cooldown timer, so you can't use Elemental Retriever on a chest and then find a second chest and immediately use Spiritual Retriever, which does make me a little sad because I really thought I was onto a big brain moment there. If you're curious about other ways to get spell elements, I'll link a few helpful guides in the description, but definitely let me know if you'd like me to make videos explaining other spell element farming methods. A lot of this stuff can be overwhelming to new or returning players. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and as always, I hope to see you out there in the spiral, and happy questing!